Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Tuesday the 14th of January 2014 and this is a follow-up to my video series about BP Earthwatch and his claims about Comet Ison and how we're supposed to be going through the debris of Comet Ison. Of course it's not only BP Earthwatch who's been making these claims but uh, several other YouTubers and uh, different internet sites. Well here we are today, it's the 14th of January 2014 here in New Zealand and uh, according to the doomsayers like BP Earthwatch we should have been passing through the debris field of Comet Ison by now. Uh, some were saying that we would start passing through that debris field from the 12th of January, uh, some are saying from the 15th of January, but anyway it's about now and this is the sort of scene that I would expect to be seeing from the skies right now. Um, and certainly we're seeing uh, images of, of fireballs and so on that have been posted on, on YouTube and Facebook um, but usually we find that um, they're nothing more than aircraft contrails in a lot of uh, cases yes some of them are real fireball events but it is true that we do get fireball events um, not infrequently um, so it's not unusual to see those fireball events especially when you've got millions of people all around the world with uh, cameras, iPhone cameras and, and different devices able to take uh, pictures on the spot like that. Now let's go back to a video that I uploaded on the 18th of December. Um, BP Earthwatch Comet ISOM predictions called to account. Let's just have a little recap on some of the things that uh, BP Earthwatch was claiming in some of his videos. If they're talking about it being that much brighter, there's no way it's five kilometers. This thing could be giant. It could be a planet changer. We're going to update this, guys, but something's wrong in the calculations. We're some, and somehow someone is going in there and manipulating these numbers. You can see it day to day to the advantage of keeping it on the down low. I son is going to be big. This in the green image is what's inside it. Some of these rocks are miles and miles wide, guys. We have the same large objects that are going to be coming over the Earth. If someone's telling you it's fading into a small dust uh, event, you don't have to worry about Be very suspicious. Also, he said they are changing the, the terminology from meteorite shower to meteorite storm. Imagine the ones that are 50 meters or a quarter mile that can do what the Behringer crater, the uh, comet did to the Behringer crater there, guys. But guys, we have a large debris field that we're going through, and the uh, International Space Station had better, they, guys, I don't know if you guys on the space station can hear what I'm saying. If they let you watch YouTube videos, they probably don't. I don't know what they're showing you. But you better not be there when we go through this debris field. And we're dealing with cyanide. That's one of the chemicals that causes these comets to glow green. So, now you'd say, well, will that burn up coming into the atmosphere? Well, they said it's not going to do that. Remember, it's coming in slow. But it has uh, some of these chemicals don't burn up to nearly 5,000 degrees anyway. The interstellar dust surrounding Earth it contains prions. Remember the call-in from Paul Begley's show yesterday? That's one of the things called mad cow disease. Now, can these metals attach themselves to the space dust and drift down? So we've got comet dust, space dust. Two, and both contain heavy metals. Cyanogen gas. They used it in the gas chambers. They used it in poison. They used it in insecticides. Hitler used it in the death camps. But guys, I want to talk about the Denver airport, some symbology here. In the top, you've got, some people call it space uh, alien. It looks like maybe a Russian or, or something like that. Notice this gas mass. Notice coming through the air is like a comet. It is the, it's showing the swing of the sword that kills the dove. Now, in, also in the airport, it looks like a sword striking the stone that's saying the New World Airport. But that's what some people say. I say it's the comet tail striking, and it strikes right in the middle of seven marks, right at three and a half. Are you listening? 
In other words, the earth is going to go through what they're symbolizing here very well could be the earth going through this debris trail of this comet. So there we've had a, a recap of some of BP Earthwatch's statements about Comet Ison. He's been talking about chunks of rock that are 50 meters or a quarter mile across, punching out craters the size of the Barringer Crater in Arizona. He's been talking about the, the, the astronauts on the International Space Station not being safe and warning that they should not be there. He's been talking about cyanogen gas um, poisoning the earth. He's been talking about prions which cause mad cow disease. He's been talking about the Denver airport and this comet striking the earth. So I think we're justified in saying well by now I think we should be expecting to see this sort of thing in our, in our skies. Now I keep seeing and, and hearing these reports from people on YouTube and Facebook and you know talking about fireball events and they're posting links to articles that they've seen on Facebook or YouTube. People stop, move away from the computer, go outside and look up. It's as simple as that. Don't rely on this nonsense that you're seeing on YouTube and Facebook and elsewhere before it's news and, and websites like that. All you have to do people is go outside and look up. Does your sky look like this? Are there craters appearing around your neighborhood? Are there explosions in the sky? Come on people don't be fooled with this nonsense. Now earlier today I saw this image or one very very similar to it. It's almost identical. Uh, posted on a news site claiming that it was a fireball uh, that had been filmed in the last 24 hours. In fact this is not a fireball it is actually a sunlit aircraft contrail and uh, these are images of, of aircraft contrails are often uh, posted and uh, the, the um, misidentified as um, meteors or even comets at times and uh, you know um, here are some more examples. Um, here's a good example of you can see that the contrails are, are illuminated by the setting or rising sun. We can s clearly see the aircraft here and that's all these images are. So don't be fooled by um, people posting images like these. Uh, you know there are a lot of um, people who are really cashing in on the hype at the moment. These claims of um, comet ice on in its debris field. As I say, if we were really going through a debris field of comet ice on and there were you know, mile wide or quarter mile wide um, meteors like BP Earthwatch is talking about, we should be seeing things like this in our sky. And you would just be able to go outside, look up and see this. You wouldn't need to go online and check on YouTube or on Facebook to see what's happening. You would know for yourself. This is nonsense people. Don't be sucked in by it. Now as an amateur astronomer I hang out on a number of uh, Facebook pages uh, related to astronomy and this is one of my local pages. This is Aotearoa Astrophotography. Aotearoa is the uh, native Maori name for New Zealand. It means land of the long white cloud. Now this is a very good astrophotography page. It's got a number of members on it and people who are posting their, um, their images that they've taken and uh, Randy Johnson is the name of the guy that runs the page. It's an awesome page. You'll see some great images from New Zealand and overseas astrophotographers. Now these guys are spending a lot of hours outside under the stars taking their images. A lot of them are taking multiple images that they stack together or they're taking time-lapse images and they're posting them on this page. And they're not reporting fireballs. Now I recently posted this survey question. I'm surveying fellow astronomers, astrophotographers, stargazers about fireball meteor observations. Have you noticed any increase in the frequency of fireball meteors? I'll be using your feedback for a YouTube video addressing claims that there have been a significant increase in fireball events in recent times. And as you can see the response, the overwhelming response here has been that there has not been any increase, uh, that they have not noticed any increase in fireball meteors. And a uh, number of comments underneath that post. I'll put a link in the description area. 
and um, the overwhelming uh, comments that are coming back is, is that there, uh, there is no observed increase. And of course there's also the AMS page, the American Meteor Society, uh, which you'll see fireball reports from. Now an interesting thing to remember is that with these um, fireball reports, for example here, latest uh, major AMS events, you'll see down here January 12, 302 reports. Oh my god, 302 fireballs. No, not 302 fireballs, 302 reports. Let's click on this link and take a closer look. And what we will find is that, as it says here, warning, this event, this event contains 302 reports. Okay, so we're talking about the same event that has been witnessed by 302 people who have actually put in a report of the same event. We're not talking about 302 different fireballs. We're talking about 302 events. Now, you might think that. Um, some of the reporting on these pages indicates an increase in fireball events. No it doesn't and if you saw my earlier video about uh, AMS um, and the email that I sent them you'll see that, that, that their only conclusion that they can come to is, is that there has been uh, no significant increase in fireball events but that there has been, there certainly has been an increase in reporting. Now people who are watching this video now, some of those people may have never heard of AMS, the American Meteor Society, but they have now. So now they are aware and they see a fireball, they know that they can go to the AMS and report that event, which means more reporting. More awareness means more reporting. It doesn't necessarily mean more fireballs. So, you know, don't take the um, the reporting out of context. This is talking about uh, 302 reports of the same event, not 302 different fireball events. There are other websites um, such as this one here called uh, SPAM, which stands for the Solar Planetary and Meteor Society, I think it was. Here it comes. Solar Planetary Come on, speed it up guys, and and you can see we've got all those links at the top of the page there, you've got all these charts and so on, and uh, you can also listen into the um, the pings from the, uh, there we go, meteor detection, okay, so that's spam. You can also listen into the, there it is, solar planetary and meteor detection group, spam. Okay, now this page refreshes every 40 seconds and you'll get a new chart. You can see the, the graphs there. They give an explanation uh, on the website. But the other thing that you can, you can do is uh, click on live audio and um, this will open up a, uh, a player. And once it loads up, there's my media player loading up. And you can listen for sounds of meteor impacts and that should play any time soon. Here we go. Now, when you hear a ping it sort of makes a um, sort of a, a whistling sound, a higher pitch sound. We'll just do a little one there. Now, if we're being bombarded with fireballs as we would expect to see uh, in that image, then this thing should be going crazy with lots of pings. So I'll put a link to all of these in the description area and um, hopefully you can still hear me under that. I'll put a link in the description area for, for all of these. But as I say, don't be fooled by these fear mongers on YouTube like BP Earthwatch and, and others. Go outside, look up at the sky and if you're not seeing this you've got nothing to worry about. As always, do check out my Facebook discussion page that's Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.